In Kurdish southeast Turkey, after 15 years of conflict, the PKK guerrillas now say they're preparing to lay down their arms in the battle against the Turkish state. In Diyarbakir, the capital, refugees have trebled the population, and foreign news crews are followed everywhere by the police. This is one of the most tense regions anywhere in the world. While the worst of the fighting has been in the villages, Diyarbakir, on the ancient Silk Route, has not been spared the ravages of war. The conflict between the Kurdistan People's Workers' Party, the PKK, and the state has been bad for business here, and hardly anyone invests. Thousands have no regular income, and tourists have not been here for a long time either. Turks of Kurdish origin, that's how Turkey refers to them. Their Kurdish culture and heritage has been suppressed by the Turkish government, and that's why they've been at war with the Turkish army since 1984. The area surrounding Diyarbakir has become a ghetto for Kurdish refugees escaping the fighting. They come from the mountains where the fighting has destroyed thousands of their villages. Civilians are caught between the army and the guerrillas, neither of which hesitate to punish disloyal civilians. People are rarely willing or able to speak to foreigners. The fear of police reprisals is too great. Only the elderly feel secure enough to speak out. Our people were tormented and tortured by the PKK and the military. Both commit murder and arson. That's why the farmers leave the land. Our villages no longer exist. <laughs> and with Oshalan and the Kurds now offering Turkey a peace deal, many remain skeptical that this could really be the end. <laughs> This story isn't going to end here. Very well, they've caught Abdullah Oshalan. But there's another 50 Oshalans who will take his place. It's not an issue which depends solely on that one person. The state has to find a peaceful solution to this problem. The journey to the deserted villages is dangerous as both sides have mined all access routes. Nobody can live here anymore, for Hunt is one of the 4,000 Kurdish villages destroyed by the fighting. The army suspected PKK sympathizers of being here and used helicopters to destroy the village. Throughout the region, the war has uprooted thousands of people. The imminent withdrawal of PKK troops from Turkey has come after severe losses on both sides. The capture of the PKK leader has buoyed the Turkish army, and since then they've pursued the guerrillas with renewed vigor. As a key NATO member, some believe the alliance is reluctant to condemn Turkey's human rights abuses, and they've threatened no serious sanctions. Support in Europe has waned, and never before have the Kurds been so isolated. The extremist party of national movement has relations with the Turkish government. They're believed to be responsible for the killing of Kurdish politicians and journalists. They're known as the Grey Wolves. There is no such thing as a Kurdish question. There are no problems between Turks and Kurds. The Kurds are our brothers. We're all the same flesh and blood. Only Europe is using all possible means to separate us. Although in our country, the separatists have their own henchmen and degenerate elements as well. The separatists he's referring to are recently elected Kurdish mayors, who he claims are also members of the PKK. If Europe intervened here, then maybe there wouldn't have been so many victims. Don't forget that 31,000 people have already fallen in this conflict. Yes. If only Europe was a little more sensitive and would say stop it, solve the problem, 
We make a proper start. But unfortunately, they don't do anything. And doing that, they make everything worse. Traveling across the country and the police still keep a close watch. 100 kilometers east of the capital is Hassan Cave. Situated on the river Tigris, it's a spectacular town of great beauty, but also of fear. For generations, people have lived here in caves carved from the rocks. The presence of the police keeps most people away and prevents anyone from speaking in front of the camera. The region is also strategically important to Turkey for another reason. Although the water of the Tigris is essential to Iraq and Syria, Turkey claims the river for itself. The water here provides a fertile land for agriculture. And now Turkey is planning to flood much of the region with a vast new dam, forcing the Kurds out and putting pressure on Iraq and Syria, who will see their flow of water severely restricted. It'll be a potentially explosive situation into the next century. In the town of Mardin, there's a military prison. It's mainly Kurds and PKK fighters who are incarcerated here. Etched on the mountainside above the prison is one of the tenets of Ataturk, founder of the Republic. It says, happy is he who is a Turk. Imprisoned PKK fighters are presented pointedly in front of a Turkish flag. Whoever collaborates and shows remorse can expect a more lenient sentence. Yet those who take this option are still a minority among the Kurds. Mardin is also a NATO base and serves as a listening post into Syria and Iraq. Relations with Turkey's Arab neighbors are full of mistrust, despite recent gestures of goodwill. The government's repressive measures and the constant upgrading of military potential don't suggest that Turkey is seeking new ways to tackle the Kurdish question. While the Turkish press gloat daily about their military successes over the PKK, Abdullah Öcalan is sitting on death row, offering reconciliation. But the Turkish government believes he just wants to save his own neck. Kurds have been living in the Middle East for over 3,000 years. Up to 18 million of them live in Turkey. The assimilation policy of Iran, Iraq, Syria and Turkey renders the Kurds one of the largest peoples of the world without recognition. What chance is there now that the Turkish government will also take up the banner of peace and relax its repressive policies in the region? On the past record, it seems unlikely.